Hi, now that we have uploaded our CSV file to S3, we need to prepare and transfer these files from S3 to Amazon RefSheet, which is going to have our data warehouse. To do that, we will use AWS Glue. So let's start. To get here, you just type in the search bar Glue and just click here and you will get to the, to the service. The first step is to create a classifier for our CSV file. So let's click at classifier. We will give it a name, uh, classifier. Let me just type very original or generic names just to be more clear. Okay, type we choose CSV and our CSV has hidden. Okay, uh, create and yes, it's already created. And now we will need to create two crawlers, one for S3 and one for Spreadsheet. We will start by creating the, the S3 crawler. So let's create this crawler S3 tags. It's not a ready map, so we click on not yet. And we add a data source. In this case, our source is on Amazon S3. So we choose S3 and we browse to select the path that our folder that has our files is. So this is the bucket, this is the folder, and this is the folder that has our CSV file. Let's check. Yes, the product CSV file is inside the XC products folder, so I will choose the XC products folder. Okay, okay. Okay, add up here. Okay, in custom classifiers, we select the classifier that we just created. We click next. Uh, we create a role. We create new role. And we call this scrape products. Scrape products. Okay, okay. We click next. We leave everything on the fold and we create a database okay we will create the database let's call this database crawler s3 okay we create this okay we go back to the to the window to the top we update and we choose db crawler s3 which is the database we already created and we the schedule is on demand for this example okay we review and yes we create this now that the crawler is created i will run the crawler you need to run this once you create so it can create the table and can get the schema of your uh, csv file while it's being created i will create a connection oh no, no no in order to do that we first need to go to amazon redshift which is going to be our data warehouse we type redshift and we select that and we get here and we create a cluster um, let's call it uh, let's redshift cluster scrape we choose free trial for this example because this service is kind of expensive. So yes, we, we choose free trial. In admin username, okay, we give it a, a username. We live in AWS user. And be sure to remember this password because we are going to need this uh, later. I will just call it uh, like this, this password and i will create the cluster okay everything is, is okay yeah okay it's creating it takes time so uh i will see if the crawler is running yes it's running it's already finishing it's it's stopping okay uh i will pause the video because i need to create now a connection but to create the connection i need that my cluster is already created so I will just skip this part 
Okay, now that the cluster is created and also the crawler is already, already finished running, so let's continue by creating a connection. This connection we will call it connection to Redshift, uh, we choose the type Redshift, and we here we select the cluster we just created, which is cluster scrape. By default, this is the database. We will just leave it like that. And the username and password is the same that we created a couple of minutes ago. And create connection, and it's OK. Now we need to create a table inside the cluster of Amazon Redshift. I click here. Uh, in the right side, I click on query on B2. I recommend using B2. Okay, this is our cluster. I will just uh, unfold everything that is inside here. If the database is there. Okay, public is the schema. And by default, since it's a free trial, it also creates these tables. We don't need any of these tables. We'll create our own table. We click here, create table. We choose the schema, which is public. Uh, we give it a name for the table. It's called uh, scrape data. And the column, one column is the name because it's the name of the product. This is a string where it here is not exactly a string, we, it's called bar chart and we create another column or field, we call this price and data type, here we also can find the float data type so we select double and uh, it's ok, it's ok, we create the table and the table is here, it's create data if we run this, you see it's empty. So let's continue. Now that we have the table already created, we go back to AWS Glue and we create the crawler for Redshift. We create the crawler, we call this uh, crawler Redshift. Next, we add a data source. The data source now is not S3 anymore. The, the, the source we select JDBC. In the connection, we select the connection we created and we choose the path. The path should include the table. The path is this dev, which is the database, public, which is the schema, and the scrape data, which is the table. So we type that dev public and was scrape data data uh, okay and we click add we click next we choose the role we choose the role that we created at the start this is scrape product security we just leave the same we add a database Yes, we add the database in the same format that we add the, the database for the S3 crawler. With the database, let's call this DB RF shift. Okay, we create the database. Okay, now we update now the databases. Okay, we select RF shift. Okay. Default and the frequency we leave it on the mat. We click next, we review, it should be like this, and we click on create crawler. Okay, we will need to run this crawler also, like we did with the crawler for S3. We will run, okay, it's running, so we need to wait for it to run. I will uh, pause the video. Okay, now that the Redshift crawler already finished running, let's go to jobs here on the left side. Let's select jobs. We will create a job. 
that is going to perform all these transfer from S3 to Redshift. Okay, we click on Visual with a source and target. In source, we select Amazon S3. In target, we select Amazon Redshift and we click on Create. Okay, this is the vision of the job. So we click on the first node, which is S3 bucket. We leave it like this. Okay, in database, we select the database that we created for our S3 crawler. And the table is S3 products. This table was created when we clicked on RAM, the first RAM of the crawler. And this is the output schema. When we first run the crawler, it, it, let's say that it did two things. The first one was to create this table, this Etsy products table. And the second one was to recognize the schema of our, of our CSV file. If you remember, we have two columns, one called name, which has a name products, and the data type is a string. And we have another column that we call price, that has the product prices, and the data type is double. Okay, we click on the next node, which is the transform. By default, is the transform node that is created. Okay, I have in my source these columns, and I have in my target these columns. So here we will select how this data transfer from which columns of the source to which columns of the target. So we created on Amazon Redshift a table that also had two columns and also were called the same, which were called name and price. So that's why here those these uh, these keys are the same. For data types we leave for the products names on the stream and for product prices in double. And that third and last note we select the database of the target. This is the database of the crawler that uh, we created for RevShift. And the table, we select the table handling of new records. We will just choose insert only for this example. And this is going to be the output schema. Price is going to be a double and name is going to be a string. Okay, if you click on a script, all these that we have done here in the visual is, let's say, translated to this script. We then click on job details. We give it a name. Let's call it job s3 to uh, redshift. Redshift. Okay, and we choose the role. The role is always the same. Let's create products. We leave everything on default. And number of workers, we choose only two, which is the minimum allowed. We choose two because it is a very light job, so we don't need 10 workers. We only need the minimum, which is two. And we leave everything else on default. Yeah. And we click on save here, to the right side, we click on save. And, okay. And we click on run. We can see the run details here on run details, and you can see the job is running. Here it will transfer the data from S3 to Redshift. Let's wait a couple of seconds. Since it's a cold start, it can take like a minute or two minutes. So I will uh, pause the uh, video here. As you can see, it's taking a lot of time, but we are just transferring a CSV file of 20 by 2 records, so it's not that much, and in theory it shouldn't take too much time. But the jobs are, are focused more on large quantity of data or many CSV files, you know, I think it's kind of overkill for what we are doing here, but it's good to know how it works. Okay, after the job succeeds, first we will check if it did it properly, and then we will connect our Amazon Redshift database to Power BI. 
Okay, finally, after almost five minutes, it finally succeeded. Okay, let's run this query again. And yes, it worked. As you can see, here we have the name column with the price column. And now, the last step is going to be connecting the Power BI to our Amazon Redshift.